Uh, I think that uh, I think that Kyoto was an historic agreement in many respects, and it was a big step forward for the world. It, 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 it had some flaws uh, in it, uh, particularly as related to the United States. I think that uh, there were a couple of things. First, that Kyoto was a, was a very short-term agreement, so that it, it, I think it ended up looking both difficult, but, not, but, but, but that it wasn't going to accomplish very much uh, in, in terms of, uh, of, of the way the U.S. saw it. The other thing is I think that the American public wasn't really prepared for uh, for the issue that much. It, it hadn't kind of percolated through the system. Uh, people didn't understand it that much, and the Congress, more than more than anything else, really wasn't prepared for it. It's very different from what's going on now. But there hadn't been much there hadn't been much uh, effort uh, before uh, Kyoto, and the ground hadn't been hadn't been prepared in the way that uh, th that is happening now. Well, there, there certainly are some years that, that are lost because of, uh, because of uh, the, the policies of the Bush administration, which was not, uh, they, they were not so interested in, in trying to make rapid progress uh, on this issue. On the other hand, I think a great deal can be, can be done now, and President Obama is very committed to action uh, on this front, as is the Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton, who I work for, and many others in our administration. So I think we are definitely committed to making up for lost time. Uh, the, president, the President has put forward very ambitious uh, uh, efforts, both on a, on, at home and the domestic side, uh, and, and with respect to what we're trying to do uh, in the negotiations for Copenhagen. So you can't get back the lost years, but you can't try to make up for lost time. I think, I think President Obama is a unique leader. I think he's an extraordinary uh, leader, and so we have an opportunity to, uh, to do things. He is committed to this issue. Uh, it is, I, I won't say that it's not a difficult negotiation, because it is. Uh, there are countries that have many different views on, uh, on, on what to do, but the president really is committed in making progress, uh, and I think that we do have an opportunity, yes. I think what we're really trying to, to accomplish in Copenhagen is, uh, is to get an agreement where all the major players, all the major countries that, uh, that are the source of greenhouse gases, causes climate change, are all part of the agreement. In, in, in Kyoto, the United States at the end didn't join, but also uh, countries like China, India, Brazil, the big developing countries, uh, also did not have any, uh, any uh, requirements to reduce their own emissions. We can't have that anymore. We need to have all of the major countries come into the agreement, work together, and start reducing their own emissions. And we need to make sure that we have provisions that take care of the countries that are the most vulnerable. Uh, and, and, and are the poorest and provide them with, uh, with money, with financing, with technology to help them both adapt to the problems that are, that are going to come from, uh, the, from the climate change that's already coming uh, at us and also help them uh, adjust and, and, uh, and, and put themselves onto a path of growth that's based on clean energy rather than, rather than polluting energy. Yeah, I think that there. I think that there are a couple of points that are the most important and the most difficult. Uh, the first point is that the big developing countries have not, up until now, had requirements, and I think that they really do need to need to agree to significant steps if the world is going to have a chance to, uh, to 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 tackle this problem. It's absolutely true that they weren't the original cause of the problem. Right, the original cause of the problem were all of the industrialized countries that by the way, didn't realize they were causing the problem, but they were. So I understand the, 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 the perspective of, of, the, of the big developing countries, and yet we can't solve this now unless they, unless they come in. Now, the truth is that many of them are doing a lot of things at home. If you look at what's going on in China, they're taking a lot of action. What they haven't done yet is, in an international context, agree to, and say, OK, we're going to do this or that or the other thing. And that's really what they, what they do need to do now, uh, and it, that's going to be a challenge to, uh, to get where we need there. The other issue, I think, has to do with financing, uh, and I think, that, I, I think that's not as difficult. I think the, the, uh, the, the uh, developed countries uh, recognize that they have to contribute a lot in the way of uh, providing funding. Uh, to help other countries, poorer countries, solve the problem. But it's a difficult time economically, as you know, all over the, all over the world. It's a very difficult economic time. So 
Uh, so coming up with, with that funding will be, will be challenging, but uh, I think those are the two toughest issues. You know, I feel very fortunate to have the opportunity to work for President Obama and to work for his Secretary of State, uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, they're, they are in, inspiring leaders, uh, and I think, uh, you know, this is an issue that I've worked on for a long time. I was in the White House back with uh, Bill Clinton, so I'm, uh, I'm quite familiar with the government, familiar with this issue. It's an enormous challenge. It's, it's difficult. It's important. It's challenging. So from a personal standpoint, uh, it's very gratifying to work on it. And, uh, and, you know, I hope we can, working all of us, the United States doesn't control things, working all of us together, I hope that we can make some progress. You know, I don't exactly look at it that way. I mean, I think I think that it, 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 there's a, there is uh, some sense, I suppose, of coming full circle if we if we were able to to uh, to get a good agreement uh, here. But I, I that, it's a good question. I don't actually look at it that way so much. I, Kyoto was a great thing to work on. Uh, what I want more than anything now is to start to make a difference and put the world help put the world on a track to, to solving this problem. I have three little kids and I, I know I want things to be good for them and for all the other children in the world. I really think it is. I mean I think it's uh, I think that there is a real opportunity to build a low carbon, to transform our economy to a low carbon non-polluting uh, basis and I think in doing that having an economy that is built on energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, it can help it can help make the economy grow it can help make for a much healthier more sustainable environment a healthier world for for people and for forests and for uh, for the natural world that I think will be good for everybody if we can do this I think it will have many extra benefits you know, that, that's a little bit hard to say. I think that we will start to see benefits from the agreement at some level uh, right away in, the, in, the, in, in, in emissions going down. Now, how you'll be able to see that out in nature, out in the, out in the world, that's a little more difficult. And that's, it's actually quite a complicated issue because uh, it involves uh, issues about how long the gases stay up in the atmosphere and things like that. But, it's, look, it is very important that we, that we start, that we make a good start, that we get going. If we don't do it, we're going to have problems down the road. And uh, so the, the important thing is to get going.